For this warm up, you can use that lead change change technique. We can do six times 10 over one. Six times 10 is 60. And 60 over one is just 60. For this one, we could do five times seven over one. Five times seven is 35. And 35 over one is just 35. Use that same logic to complete problems one through four. What division expression does this represent? Well, we see two thirds and they're breaking it up into groups that are one fourth in size. In the tape diagram, we can see that we have one group, two groups, and two pieces out of the three that they were using to create a group. In yesterday's lesson, we saw that creating fractions with common denominators was helpful, and a common denominator between three and four is 12. Three times four is 12, so two times four would go here. 4 times 3 is 12, so 1 times 3 would go here. And the dividing with unit fractions was helpful because then we can just look at the numerators. And this would be 8 divided by 3, or 8 thirds, which if we turn that into a mixed number would also be 8 and 2 thirds. The third technique that we have seen is 2 thirds can be multiplied by four over one, that's that leave change change. Two times four is eight, three times one is three, and again, that can be changed into two and two thirds. So any of these strategies using the tape diagram, the equivalent denominators, or leave change change, we arrive at the same answer. You can see here, the equivalent denominator, common denominator method. And then in this one, we have that division of the fractions, which we can change into what's called an unknown factor equation. So we can write that in the table for problem one. And here you can see two thirds is equal to one out of four of what? So this is that tape diagram that represents this unknown factor equation, which you can see they've drawn here. Two thirds is one fourth of what number? Well, then one of these boxes represents two thirds. So this would be two thirds, four thirds, six thirds, eight thirds. Now we can look at the unknown factor equation for the second problem. One third is one half times what number? So if it's a half, it would take two boxes to make a whole and one third represents a half. So what would the whole amount be? One of these boxes represents one third. So to make a full one, it would require two thirds. Here we have a different way of looking at one half and one third. This time, one half is one third of what number? So we're going to draw three boxes for thirds. One of these thirds is a half. So how much is the whole tape diagram worth? 
one half, two halves, three halves. One or three fourths is one third of what number? Again, for thirds, we have three boxes. One of those boxes represents three fourths. So the entire tape diagram would be three, six, nine fourths. We can rewrite this one as one times two is two, plus one more makes three. Three over two is one fifth of what number? For one fifth, we should draw five boxes. Each box represents three over two. So this would be three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen over two. Remember in the leave change change strategy, we leave that first fraction. We change the division symbol to multiplication and we flip the second fraction over. So one half becomes two over one or just two. For part B, leave four sevenths, change to multiplication, and then flip that fraction over to make it five or five over one. Leave two fifths. Change division to multiplication and flip one third to three. For this unknown factor equation, we're going to say four equals two thirds times what? And then we will write down four is two thirds of what number? So we're going to write down thirds, and two-thirds is represented by four. So in each of these boxes, we would write a two, which means the quotient would be six. For this one, four-fifths equals two-fifths times what? Four-fifths is two-fifths of what number? So we've got fifths and two-fifths is represented by four-fifths. So in each box we would place two-fifths So that would be two, four, six, eight, ten fifths. Well, ten fifths is the same as two holes. Write down that unknown factor equation. One half is two thirds of what number? So we need thirds. And two thirds is represented by one half. If I split one half into two parts, that would give me a fourth in each one. This is one, two, three fourths for our quotient. One third equals four fifths times what number? One third is four fifths of what number? Here we need fifths or five boxes and four of them is represented by one third. If I split one third into four parts, one third split into four would be one twelfth.
So then if I have 1 twelfth, 2 twelfths, 3 twelfths, 4 twelfths, and 5 twelfths. Here we would have 6 fifths equals 3 fourths times what? 6 fifths is 3 fourths of what number? So we're going to draw four boxes for the fourths. And three of those is represented by six fifths. If I split the six fifths into three parts, that would give me two fifths in each box. So the whole diagram would be two, four, six, eight fifths. For this last one, we are going to change it to an improper fraction. 1 times 2 is 2, plus 1 more makes 3. So this will say 3 over 2 is 2 thirds times what number? So we're going to draw three boxes for the thirds. And two of those thirds is represented by 3 over 2. If I split 3 over 2 into two parts, we could rewrite that as 3 over 4. So that's the value of one unit. And then we would have 3, 6, 9 fourths as our quotient. So it says, Leo pours one-fourth gallon of lemonade into a jug. The lemonade fills an eighth of the jug. How many gallons of lemonade must Leo pour to fill the whole jug? So we're going to draw the whole jug, which would be eight parts. And the lemonade filled one of the eighths and it was a fourth of a gallon. So for the whole jug, we would have one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, eight fourths, and eight fourths is the same as two holes, so it would take two gallons to fill Leo's jug. A faucet fills a bucket at a rate of one-fifth gallon per minute. How many minutes does it take to fill a bucket that holds seven-eighths gallons? Write your answer as a mixed number. Typically when I see a problem like this and I'm confused about the order to divide the numbers, I replace it with things that are simple. So a faucet fills a bucket at a rate of, let's say, two gallons per minute. How many minutes does it take to fill a bucket that holds 10 gallons? Write your answer as a mixed number. So ignoring the values that are there, if it takes two gallons per minute and we're trying to fill 10 gallons, then I would divide 10 by 2 to find out that it takes 5 minutes. So now I can replace those values with the actual numbers from the problem. Now this can help us figure out how to draw our tape diagram. In our unknown equation, we would say 7 eighths is one-fifth of what number? So we would draw five boxes and one of those boxes would represent seven-eighths. So this would be seven-eighths for each box. That would be seven, fourteen, twenty-one, twenty-eight, thirty-five, eighths, 8 fits into 35 
four times because eight times four is 32. We have three extra because 32 plus three makes 35. So this is four and three eighths of a minute to fill seven eighths of a gallon. Ryan picks blueberries and freezes three fourths of them. He freezes two and a half pounds of blueberries. How many pounds of blueberries did Ryan pick? Write your answer as a mixed number. Immediately when I see a mixed number, I'm gonna change it to an improper fraction. Two times two is four, plus the one makes five. So that turns into five over two. So he freezes two fourths or three fourths of them. And that was five over two pounds of blueberries. I'm not sure which way to divide. So let's think of it like this. Maybe he freezes half of them and he froze 20 pounds. 20 pounds is a half. So I'm gonna to wanna to take 20 and divide it by half to figure out how many all together. But those aren't the actual values, so we're gonna replace the one half with the three fourths. And I'm gonna replace the 20 with the actual value, which was five over two. So now I know for that unknown equation, we had three fourths for our tape diagram and three fourths represented five over two. Now, if you're splitting something into three parts and it already has a two in the denominator, the denominator would now be a six. So this is five, 10, 15, 20 sixths. Six fits into 20 three times, because three times six is 18. 18 plus two more makes 20. So this is three and two sixths, but two and six both have a two in common, so we can reduce those even further. So he picked three and a third pounds of blueberries. And you might be looking at me like, um, I am not getting these tape diagrams, and that's okay. On your quiz, you do not have to worry about the tape diagrams. You can just do the leave change change method, which would rewrite it as five over two times four over three. And you see here, five times four is 20, two times three is six. So we're still gonna get the exact same answer no matter which strategy you use. If tape diagrams aren't for you, that's okay. We do have to use them here because it told us to in the directions, but on your quiz, it's not going to say that. All right, so we are looking at two different tape diagrams here. It says, how many groups of three-fifths are in two-thirds? So they created one group and one extra piece out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to create a group. Over here, we have a different interpretation where it says two thirds is three fifths of what number? So we saw three fifths, three boxes out of the five. Here, this would be two, four, six, eight, ten ninths which is the same as one and one ninth. So they're just two different interpretations of the same division problem. Please make sure your workbook is filled in and your warm-up is complete.